This picture seems to express the logo of my life, following the vision. It was taken in 1967 at the height of my ministry. This picture seems to exemplify how I always look up to the Lord for guidance and strength. I encourage my patients to look up to the Lord for healing. Here at the age of two and a half years, I look like I'm ready to preach the Word of God. I had a deep sense of calling to be a missionary from early childhood. Here I am seen close to my older brother, Ben, later a missionary to Niger, Africa. We were very close brothers. My parents, when they got married in 1913 in Amsterdam, Holland, in 1914, they immigrated to Holland, Michigan. This is my mother before she met my father. She often played the guitar at the Salvation Army in the evenings. After graduation from Moody Bible Institute in Chicago and from Western Theological Seminary in Holland, Michigan, my father was called to Yakima, Washington in 1921. He became pastor of the Yakima Valley Reformed Church. This is the church and the parsonage. We were there for six years until I was nine. In 1927, my father was called to Belgium as a missionary to establish a church in the city of Ghent. This is our house. We lived on the third floor. This shows our church on the second floor with the large organ which I played during church services. About 150 people came on Sunday evenings. My father in his Dutch pulpit robe in 1927. He also taught in the Bible Institute in Brussels, teaching church history, Christian education of children, and personal evangelism. This was my family in 1939, before my brother Ben went to Niger, Africa, and before my brother John went to Hope College in Holland, Michigan. This shows my brother John and me walking to school each day, about a mile's distance, four times a day. Notice our knicker trousers we wore till 18 years of age. I taught a Bible class for boys and girls on Sunday morning. My brother Bill is closest to me in the picture. As a platoon leader with Boy Scouts, I led an emergency evacuation of a wounded. I was scoutmaster for a year later. My father took the family on vacations to the Netherlands or to Belgian beaches Notice how packed we were. This is my class with our chemistry professor. I was the tallest in my class. We started with 83 students, but only 12 graduated, for it was a tough schooling. This is the old city of Ghent, which I took in 1995. This city dates back to 629 A.D. We walked by here each day to school. Here are some views of gables of various sorts of beauty. They are old, dating back to the 16th and 17th centuries, surrounding the medieval port of Ghent. These gables are similar to gables also seen in Holland, Germany, Scandinavian countries, but all have a beauty of their own. The old castle of the Counts dates back to 868 AD and was 
a stronghold over the years and is famous site as are the three towers, St. Nicholas Church, 11th century, the Belfry with the best known Carolins in the old countries, and St. Bavo Cathedral started in 942. This is the primary school I attended the last three years. It was called St. Lawrence Head School, regarded top grade school in Ghent. It has a tower on top of the building. Uh, this is St. John's Anglican Church for the British people living in Ghent. I played the pipe organ there at 11 a.m. on Sundays after our own church service ended. Here are also scenes of the Royal Ateneum, which I attended from 1930 to 1938. It comprised of high school and two years of college. It was an old building, formerly a cloister, with a chapel and tower as is seen. This Royal Ateneum was considered the best school of its kind in Belgium. I attended also the old and famous National University of Ghent till the war broke out in 1940 May 10 with the Nazi invasion. The next important phase in my life was meeting Eleanor. The Nazi invasion brought us back to America in 1941. This is Eleanor before I met her. I had never dated a girl before. But in God's providence, I met her at InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at the University of Michigan. First, lovemaking. On a later occasion, I got more serious and asked her for engagement. This happened soon later. Here is our happy decision to join our lives as we both had been called to be missionaries at an early date. Very soon afterwards in 1942, I joined the Army at Fort Custer, Michigan and came to see Eleanor after basic training. Less than a year later at Camp McCoy, Sparta, Wisconsin, I was promoted to sergeant technician in orthopedics. Word came that we were leaving for overseas, so I called Eleanor asking if we could get married rather than leave her as a fiancé at home. This is the Presbyterian Church Eleanor's father established in Pontiac, Michigan since 1920. This is where we got married and where I was ordained. Here's Peter, our son, born while I was overseas in Italy for two and a half years in Naples. I greatly cherished that picture. After discharge from the Army, I attended Hope College in Holland, Michigan in 1946. I needed some courses to enter seminary. This is the way I looked close to graduation from Pittsburgh Genius Seminary in 1949. Picture of the Van Leer family as we apply to go to Korea as career missionaries. Peter and Benny are here. After eight months in Korea, we were evacuated from the United States Army to Japan in 1950 due to the Korean War. I returned back to Korea in 1952. In 52, due to the destructions and famine, I set up soup kitchens in six districts with help of Church World Service. This is the motorcycle I purchased in Japan on one of my trips to see the family. I had it transformed into a small truck in Korea with a pastor and technician. We showed the King of Kings and other films and slides to over half a million people. Here I am preaching to a crowd on the marketplace. The war had destroyed one-third of the schools and the churches. 
I set up church schools called Bible clubs with a regular curriculum for 7,000 children and 120 schools. This shows one of the graduation classes of the Bible Institute in Andong with four teachers. Here we are in front of the mission home where we stayed. I taught in the North Japan College for one year. This time I was in Japan for a week, having been invited to speak at a Bible conference in Yokota Air Base. This was on the occasion of an oratorical contest in English for students of North Japan College. I was one of the judges and taught and held English chapel hour once a week. Eleanor and the children came back to Andong in 1954. Several of our co-workers welcomed them back. I was led to hold revival meetings for pastors and other church leaders. It was truly a time of the Holy Spirit's leading. I am seeing leading a prayer meeting. Our 40-bed Presbyterian Hospital was destroyed during the Korean War. I set up a Good Samaritan Clinic in one of the buildings until the hospital was rebuilt in 1958. At this time, I received a certificate of appreciation from the provincial government for the clinic. In 1984, as we visited Korea, we did especially pay some time at the new Presbyterian Hospital. Here are some of the doctors and staff. This is the Mission High School, which I founded in 1953 to receive pupils from the school church day schools. The two towers on the administration building I had designed myself. Since I was the founder and first principal, I was urged to be at the 30th anniversary celebration. It shows the time of the chapel hour. Speaking to the boys senior high and later at the girls high school and the boys junior high, each one of the schools has about a thousand students. At the 30th anniversary of the high school, a bust was unveiled of the founder in front of the administration building. Here the first graduation class of 1958 was being honored at this celebration. Notice the bust in the background. This monument was also unveiled displaying the motto I presented to the school, God First and the aims of the school, making Christ known, developing Christian character, training Christian leaders. A good view of the chapel hour of the women's high school as they hear my message. It was the best computer department in the province. The boys' middle school chapel hour. It was again a great privilege to speak. In this film, we are attending the 30th anniversary of Kyung An High School, which I founded in 1954. Here you can hear the girls' high school students marching and trumpeting on their way to the athletic field. This occasion took place in 1984. We received an overwhelming welcome when we arrived in the train station. The red carpet was spread out most of our visit. After several formal meetings with speaking engagements, they had an outdoor sports event. Faculty members accompanied us to the formal gathering and activities. It was indeed a great event. Not all that took place can be shown at this time. Several citations and gifts given to us and bouquets of flowers by faculty and students. I was asked to speak and give a few words of greetings and recalling a few of the outstanding happenings of the beginnings of the high school. This was a glorious time for us 
in the way they honored us. <laughs> The next phase in my life, the magnificent Gothic Cathedral of Learning at the University of Pittsburgh. I had 56 credits toward the PhD degree in 1949. My entrance picture to the university in 1954. I had to finish my courses to obtain 90 credits towards the PhD degree in education field. After 15 full months, I finished the requirements for the PhD and am seen here carrying the dissertation in my arm. A piano recital during a festivity. My teacher was Leon Tor, president of the Royal Conservatory in Ghent. Prize of Rome, winner in composition. A year later, I was appointed to the faculty of Yonsei University, Korea, founded by Horace G. Underwood, a Presbyterian missionary. In 1956, we went to Seoul, to Yonsei University. It had just five buildings then. Now it has over 50 and 40,000 students, but had 3,000 when we came. Here we had just arrived. The president had asked me to help him keep Yonsei Christian, I work with the chaplain to train him, help the Christian Student Association, and set up a department of religious education. Our home on the campus for 20 years, the same where Helen Scott and Howard Rhodes grew up. Their father taught at Yonsei for 20 years. With the Korea Student Christian Movement at Christmas celebration, I served as general secretary for two years until a Korean was found. Almost every Sunday I was in the country preaching in some church north of Seoul and also at times in Seoul. Here we are at an orphanage at Christmas time. I gave some time to orphanages as in Andong. Eleanor worked to rescue prostitutes. Here I am at my main job of teaching Christian education pastoral counseling, psychology of religion, pastoral care, psychology of childhood and adolescence. It shows how I gave an outline in English as I taught in Korean, as this would assist them to know the vocabulary for reading the books. This show how I love to meet and work with students after chapel or classes or whenever we met. Students often refer to me as a giant, though only a head taller. We also enjoyed faculty fellowship, picnics, retreats. These days I meet students who have already retired. This always surprises me, but it is 42 years ago. Another view of us at a faculty get-together. Eleanor always was at my side. I do, I do not know what I could have done without her. In 1960, on the occasion of the graduation class of the College of Theology with the faculty, at a faculty retreat of the College of Theology, to my immediate right was Dr. George Pack, who called me to the university, one of Korea's most famous men. In 1963, I received the Human Rights Award, chosen from among 200 applicants by the Korean government for the work I had done among poor and destitute in Andong. In 1966, 
I participated in a Korean language oratorical contest among foreigners. The cup was presented by the chairman of the Democratic Republican Party. Peter was one of the founders in establishing the United Graduate School of Theology at Yonsei in 1964, cooperating with four seminaries in Seoul to raise the standards. I was appointed Dean of the College of Theology in 1962 and served for two terms. I raised the faculty from six to 12 members and the student body was doubled. In the United Graduate School of Theology, a class of Master of Religious Education students. There were at that time 55 students for the MTH, the Master of Theology, and the MRE, the Master of Religious Education degrees. The building of the College of Theology and its dean. Another picture from the college annual graduation album with the dean, the department chairman next to me, and also the dean of the United Graduate School of Theology. In 1967, having come back from the, from the United States after another year of advanced studies, I was appointed director of the newly built student union. One of the most favorite activities was counseling. Having set up a counseling center of which I was director, here I am counseling a student. Seeing the very necessary needs of fellowship, communication, mutual understanding, I established a coffee house ministry, inviting the faculty officially to come in dialogue. In the former picture, the dean of the university was invited. Here the vice president was asked to come. This gave the students a chance to meet the faculty. To me, it was a most important matter to get close and be available to our children. Here are Peter and Benny with their dad. Ellie and Martha also were most dear and important to me. This was a few days spent with Benny at a Boy Scout camp, having been a scout myself. These were unforgettable days. The greatest moments were to have Eleanor at my side, sharing the ministry with me at times. On our furrows, our family were right with us when possible. Here, Ellie Joan and Martha Jean shared with us our visits with the churches. Here we were back in Pontiac, where we made our first love and where we were married and I was ordained. In 1976, a year before we came home leaving the field, it was such a joy for us to adopt and invite into our family as our daughter, Andrea. We came home in 1977 for good and I got involved in counseling and hospital chaplaincy at Northwestern Memorial Hospital and then at Memorial Hospital in Wisconsin. This was our home in Sheboygan, right across the hospital for nine years. It was my desire to be close to the hospital, to be on call when needed. In 1978, I was certified as a professional mental health clergy by the Association of Mental Health Clergy. The chief psychiatrist handed it to me. Here I am counseling a patient in the psychiatric unit. I had counseled over 300 alcoholic patients in the psych unit. I served as a pastor to senior adults for five years at the Glenkirk Presbyterian Church in Glendora. Here I am seen and with Eleanor after church visiting with two seniors. 
It has been a great joy and satisfaction to do this ministry. Chaplaincy at City of Hope has been another crowning glorious experience for me. I want to close with this photo. This is the entrance to the town Lierop in Holland, 2000 population, and dates back to the 17th century. We are here, son Bernard of my brother Ben and his family from England. Our ancestry came from here because Van Lierop means from Lierop.